for a party. Let's get started. Let's get started in here. Let's get started. Oh my god. Oh, I can't get situated. That's so abrupt and crazy. I'm not including that. Or maybe I will. This is the real me. <laughs> Jeremy's a little grumpy. I'm a little hangry. Wait, you just ate. I didn't eat the whole bar. I only had like a few bites of it. Why don't you eat it? I didn't want to eat it all. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let's do this recording. Let's do this recording now. <laughs> that doesn't quite work. Well, you started. I know. So you... Everybody, everybody. <laughs> I'm hitting delirium. That's when what's we happening. have spent like a half day together, we hit a point of delirium. We can never get a full work day when we're together because we just reach a point of delirium. It's usually in the afternoon, and we're like, "All right, I will like dip out because I'm like, we can't get work done." Like yeah, this. We, we ain't gonna be productive at all anymore. I'm Ashton Smith, and I'm Jordan Long, and we're coming in hot. We're seventh generation entrepreneurs with a passion for fusing creative expression and business fundamentals to help entrepreneurs powerfully expand their companies. Legacy Creator is a show for creatives, big thinkers, and visionaries who are doing business differently. Together, we unpack topics to help you embody your creative identity, develop as a leader, and powerfully grow your business. In a nutshell, we're calling you out and calling you higher. Today, we're really going to be living by our motto calling you out and calling you higher. We're having a very direct conversation today, but you guys know these are our favorite conversations. And we really do hope that this comes across the way that we intend, which is, you know, we're really aiming to call all of us as a collective higher in the online space, in our industry, so we can be the best that we can be and represent our brands and our companies in the best possible light. And so today's episode is called Get Off Your High Horse. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds direct, and yes, it is very direct. Um, but before we kind of get into unpacking why we're talking about this, what does this mean? Let's go ahead and provide you with a little bit of context <laughs> around this conversation. I think that there are a lot of reasons why we may get on our high horse in our business journey. And some of these reasons are very valid. And sometimes too, I feel like we actually don't even know or realize that we're operating from this place. Um, and I think that that's where m the majority of people fall in this conversation. I don't think that anyone here is intentionally like, I'm better than everyone, you know? <laughs> and I'm just not gonna be accessible to anybody in my business because I'm at this level. I don't really think anybody has that conscious attitude in our community. Because <laughs> we know you guys, we love you guys. Some people out there, some crazy people might. Um, but I think sometimes we reach this place without even realizing it. And so a few things that can lead to this. Number one, maybe, you know, you've been burned in your business. I think we've all been burned at some level in our businesses. And that can really make us put up our defenses a lot. We just don't want to let anyone in. We end up um, retreating and we just, we want nothing to do with anyone. And I feel like if you're an introvert already, and then on top of that, you get burned, you're just, I mean, helpless. We're helpless, aren't we? Like at that point, we're just gone. Um, this could also be the very real situation where you have a decrease in time available as you grow your business. I mean, that's what we all are working towards and hoping for. We're growing our businesses, we're growing our companies and as you do that, you have less and less time than you did when you started out. And sometimes that can just very naturally lead you to be on your own island where you're kind of just like in the business, doing the things, and you're less in front of your people, around your people, accessible to people. Um, and maybe you even isolate yourself to where you're a little bit higher up and your community might get the feeling that they're below you or beneath you and they can't relate to you anymore. Um, another thing too, is that this can just naturally come with growing experience. Um, as you gain experience in your expertise, as you grow in your business, sometimes that can lead to us operating from our ego. Um, I have been there. Like we all have an ego and it'd be really easy to fall into those patterns of operating from your ego 
Um, and that leads to you making less time to interact with people, people, and that can be your community, your customers, your peers, anyone. And before we even realize it, we have positioned ourselves where we're on our high horse and we're just like, we're in our own world. But the thing is people do business with people that they like. And in order to like you, they have to trust you. And in order to trust you, they have to have the opportunity to get to know you. And so if you are retreating for whatever reason that may be, even if it's a really good reason, you're probably putting yourself so high up to where you're inaccessible to people um, and you're not going to get very far in business. And so that's really what we want to avoid. And one of the most important traits that we can carry as business owners, and this is whether you're starting your business today, or you are like seven figure business owner, you're rocking it. You have multiple companies. One of the most important traits that you will always foster and carry is humility and humble defined as having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. I love that. And it's quite literally the opposite of operating from our ego. So it's important that we don't allow our growth in our business or those experiences of being burned along the way cause us to get jaded and put up our walls. And this is really where I see most people in this situation. It's a defense mechanism. You're putting up your walls um, versus solely coming from a place of like, I just think I'm better than everybody. But ultimately, we have to remain open and posture ourselves in a way that allows other people to have access to us. If people don't have access to us, how can we impact them? Right? Like, how are we going to actually leave an impact on people's lives? And one of the biggest mindsets that I've seen business owners adopt in the online space is this idea of boundaries at all costs. Like we're throwing up boundaries left and right. We got walls all around us. We aren't dealing with it. We aren't dealing with anything. And some of this comes from being burned. Some of this comes again, just from simply being busy. And a lot of this comes from maybe being like burnt out. I've seen this very commonly from people who have once been in corporate and they got so burnt out. Um, some people have even been like hospitalized from like overworking so much and having no boundaries. And so then when you go to open your own business, you kind of swing to the opposite end of the spectrum and you put all of your walls up and you have all the boundaries up. But if you are in business, you cannot have four walls around you. You cannot isolate yourself that much. Um, if you do, you're just not going to go very far. Um, and I do want to point out that sometimes you need to enforce boundaries. So we're not hating on having boundaries. Jordan and I both have boundaries in our life and in our business. Um, and I think it is a requirement in business because you can't prioritize everything at the same level. Um, there's an appropriate time for boundaries, but the key is really knowing the difference between when are those boundaries actually needed versus when are they maybe just a way of keeping yourself on your own island? When are they acting as more of that reactionary defense mechanism? When are they helping you versus when are they hindering you? Because if you're inaccessible, you can't connect with people. And if you can't connect with them, you can't build trust with them. Yeah. And if you're a business owner or you're like an entrepreneur, you're trying to get more customers and grow your business. Like you have to be able to connect with the actual people, you know, that's part of it, you know? Um, and I just love, I love that idea of boundaries at all costs. Well, actually I kind of don't like the idea of it, but I like that we're talking about it. Cause I think that so much of the time that stems from us just maybe wanting everything to feel good all the time and to feel kind of like this utopia where it's like, if I have all these boundaries set up, then like no one can cross these boundaries and I just feel good all the time. And like, no, no one can like ruffle my feathers or whatever, but that's not really attainable. I don't think, I think this whole concept of like boundaries at all costs, having these walls up all the time, it kind of just perpetuates this idea that life and business 
should be perfect all the time, should be perfect and there shouldn't be any problems. I should never have to problem solve or deal with people's issues or whatever. Like that's just not the case. Like that's not reality. Um, like you said, you were talking about like people who come from corporate and they come into this and they just like want to create their perfect business and like their dream business. And they might throw up a lot of boundaries because maybe they had no boundaries at once. Like I totally understand that it is kind of like a defense mechanism, but I will say I find it very interesting when new business owners, and when I say new, I mean, maybe you're, you've been in the game for like five to 10 years. I think that's still very much in the early stages of being an entrepreneur. Cause if you're an entrepreneur, you're kind of like in it for life. And like, it, it's like a lifelong journey uh, for most people, I guess. But if you're in the beginning phases of, of running your business and maybe you're only in like the first five years, why would you say no? to working with certain people? Or like, why would you put up this wall and be like, I'm not gonna work with this person for X, Y, and Z reason? Why would you do that? <laughs> I find it just very interesting why people might say no to those sorts of opportunities. And I think when we work in these sorts of environments where maybe everything's not perfect, maybe we work with a client that's like not the greatest, or maybe you're having issues with someone, whatnot, whatever the case may be, it actually allows you to learn as a business owner. It helps you uh, navigate difficult situations. It helps you grow in a lot of different ways. It helps you grow in your communication with people. It helps you grow in that skill. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when we say no to certain things, just because it's like, I want to have all these boundaries set up, we're saying no to like potential opportunities, potential experiences that would allow us to grow, that would allow us to um, learn a lot. Like you learn a lot by working with all sorts of people or by, by, by navigating all sorts of like different situations in business. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's like <laughs> almost a little bit foolish to say no to to say no to that. Like, why would you, like, I think of like maybe our dad, I feel like when he was starting out in his business and when he was working with his dad, they took what work they could get. And that was kind of the thing. And I think that's the case for a lot of entrepreneurs in the early days, you might have minimal boundaries to like minimal to no boundaries, which like, I'm not saying that I'm fully recommending that, but I'm also like, that's just, some food for thought. Like, why are you saying no to certain things that maybe you should say yes to, or maybe you should just embrace it and take it as a learning opportunity. Um, why would you say no to like perfectly good money? Why would you say no to working with a customer? If they want to work with you, if they want to learn from you, why would you say no to that? I just find that like so interesting. And I think it's this, you know, this idea of like boundaries at all costs. Like I said, and I mean this in the most loving way, I'm not trying to like come at anyone. I do think that's a little bit foolish to say no to these opportunities. Instead of that, maybe use a bit more wisdom. Say yes to the opportunities that are coming your way. Say yes to things. I'm not saying say yes to everything, okay? Like I, don't take me out of context here, please. But say yes to, to new opportunities and new experiences that could help you so much. And also being... In, in business, but also just like in life, it's all about who you know. And like, why would you say no to working with someone and, and just say like, I'm not gonna deal with that. You're saying no to like so many potential opportunities that you might not even be aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, so don't just say no to certain things just for the sake of like, I wanna protect my peace at all costs. Like that's just not the way life works all the time. It's not a utopia and we're not always gonna feel good. I'm not saying you should always feel bad uh, and like not in alignment, but it's just some food for thought. Um, why are you saying no to certain things? Uh, and when you do say yes to certain things, be wary of maybe not saying yes to everything. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like there's a lot of layers here because what Jordan's speaking to is especially when you're starting out in your business, there's this element of kind of going through this process of paying your dues and figuring out like, what is it that you truly bring to the table? What's your expertise? Who do you like working with? Who do you work best with? And those are answers that you are going to get the, you're going to get the best answers to those questions in real time, in process, not by guessing, not by thinking or immediately saying, I block myself from all of these potential opportunities because you think 
that they aren't going to work out, you're actually going to get those answers in real time. So I have absolutely worked with clients in the past that I wouldn't necessarily work with again in the future. And I wouldn't really know that had I not taken on those opportunities. So this is very much so, especially if you're in those early stages and especially too, if you are not booked out and you're actively looking for clients, it's a whole other story. If you have massive demand and you're booked out, you don't need no more business, then you get to say no to whoever you want to say no to, right? But if you are actively looking for business and you have potential jobs coming your way, why would you say no? You know, unless there's some major red flags, unless someone's coming to you, let's say you're a social media manager and they're like, Hey, I need a photographer for my wedding. Um, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's not quite right. Or maybe they're like, I need a caterer for my wedding. Well, that's not even your niche. So like, you're not going to say yes to things that are outside of your expertise in your wheelhouse. But let's say that someone comes and asks for something specific that you don't include in a current package. I am a huge advocate of custom crafting containers and packages for people either to accommodate their budget or because you know that it's in your wheelhouse you're open to testing out what it would be like to provide that service and it's additional cash flow coming into your business. It's an additional customer that you can work to retain and increase the scope of the project with. So just don't be so close minded, right? I think that we go into business sometimes, especially in our little online space bubble. And we think that we have to have all of these perfect things like in place such as those boundaries, such as like, I need to feel, you know, completely at peace and happy and fulfilled at all times. Otherwise it's not worth it for me. And if that's your top priority and you don't actually need or want to prioritize the cash flow, by all means, turn away that business, but you have to weigh what's more important. And I always tell my clients this too, when they're debating taking on a project or not, there's not a right or wrong path forward. Generally speaking, it's more about what's a priority. Would you rather have this cash flow from this project or would you rather not? Would you rather have additional time to find other potential projects and turn away the cash flow? Okay. That's also a viable option, but again, you get to decide and don't be so close minded, especially when you're getting started, because a lot of these opportunities with clients in your business, like it's going to give you so much experience. It's going to give you so much knowledge and wisdom that you can use moving forward. And I think that's the whole point. What if you could turn your ideas into actual profit for your business right now? You may feel like you're doing all the right things and yet your efforts aren't creating more money for your business today that changes. Our free 90 day profit planner has helped hundreds of creative entrepreneurs transform their income goals into an actualization strategy since 2019. You can download yours for free today. Just visit myawakening.co slash profit. That's myawakening.co slash profit. Now back to the show. Another thing to really keep in mind is that as business owners, we have to be accessible at some level and you are going to be more accessible to more people early on in your business. Like when you're first starting out, I mean, I sure hope you're out there hitting the ground running. You're, if you're not going door to door, you're sending those messages, you're networking online, you're going to in-person networking events, you are collaborating with people, you are working to expand your client base. And as you grow, you may become less accessible to the masses and maybe more accessible to like your inner circle. That's a very real thing that happens, but you have to be accessible to someone (laughs) like otherwise you're not really going to create growth and impact through your business. You know, even if you are at the highest level of success, financial, you know, milestones, whatever it may be, you're more than likely going to have to have people around you in a team capacity in a contractor capacity that are helping you build up the business. And they need to be able to access you. They need to be able to ask questions, to talk to you. You can't be so far removed and so inaccessible that like the business can't move forward. And like that is going to look different at every single stage but you do have to be accessible. I just find it so funny people that go into business and just think that like 
they can kind of just do their own thing behind the scenes and stay in their comfort zone. They don't have to really like be available to a team. They don't have to go out and network. They don't have to like meet with clients. They're just going to maybe create a passive income product and that's just going to make millions. I hate to bring it to you, but that is just not how it works. <laughs> You're going to have to speak with people. You're going to have to be available to people to grow the business. I think a lot of introverts struggle with this as well because you know, the online space does perpetuate this idea that you can build your business in the way you want, which I believe that, um, but you can also just make money while you sleep. I also believe that, but there's like a beginning to that journey and it doesn't happen overnight. And people that make a lot of money through their passive income sources, they have an incredible network. They have affiliate marketers on their team in their community. They are well known. They've done PR tours. I mean, you've got to put in the work. You have to pay your dues to get to that place. And so this applies to your direct customer, like being available for conversations for sales calls. If I can tell you the number of people that are like, I just want to eliminate sales calls from my process because I just don't really want to make the time for them. I feel like I don't have the time for them. And I'm like, Hmm. Okay. Let's go look at your conversion rates from sales calls versus just inquiry forms. Let's let the numbers kind of speak. One-on-one sales conversations are always going to be the most effective. And I do think there's a time and place if you've scaled to a certain level where maybe you can remove those sales calls. Maybe you can bring on like an outsider sales expert that could take those calls for you, but you got to have the budget for it. I'm working with a client right now who's probably going to surpass the seven figure mark any month now in her business. And she still takes sales calls, you know? Um, And so I think, again, just like being available to your customer, what do you need to do? How do you need to be accessible to build a relationship, to nurture and to get them over the fence to work with you? A lot of times that's going to take one-on-one contact. Um, This also applies to building your network. Like you have got to always be putting yourself out there to build your network. Um, Collaborating with people is a great option. Going to in-person networking events, going to virtual events, finding people on different apps like Instagram. Um, And this can even be working with your clients too. You know, you have to be available to pour into your clients whether you're coaching them, whether you're providing a service for them, you can't have so many boundaries up to where they can't reach out. They can't have their needs met. They can't ask questions. That's not going to last long. And your retention rates are definitely not going to be where you want them to be. Um, but if you are an entrepreneur, you are in the business of networking and talking to people and being available to people. It doesn't mean 24 seven all the time, with zero sleep and no boundaries. Like that's not what I'm saying, but you have to not be on your own Island. You have to be available to people. And if you cannot do that, then you really shouldn't be in business because that is something that's going to be required of you. Um, even just in the the early stages before you get to that ultimate vision, if you want to be a recluse and that's what you want to build your business for, I believe you can do that, but you can't do that overnight. True that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know as like a consumer on the other side of things, like I always appreciate when someone like messages me back or like replies to my comment, gets back to me. Like, honestly, like that's kind of like the bare minimum, (laughs) but I feel like some people don't even do the bare minimum. And as a consumer, I'm always so appreciative when someone does reply to me. Like one of my biggest pet peeves is if I send someone a DM on Instagram that I like, maybe I'm not like super close with, but like I have a connection with them. If I send a DM and they never get back to me, that makes me feel like crap. I'm like, oh, I just put myself out there. I just said, hey, like your outfit's super cool. And then I didn't even get a response. It's like the most bare minimum, like simple things. But like, I, that's just one of my biggest pet peeves. And same, like if I comment on someone's post and they just don't even like it or respond to it, I'm like, what? And I know, I mean, that's just like such a little thing, but if you're like a bigger account and you have like thousands of comments, you can't reply to like everybody. I totally get that. But like, I'm talking small creators. I'm talking small accounts. Like they're getting like 10 comments and I'm Mm -hmm. like, 
what about me? Like I said something really nice to you and I didn't get any, <laughs> what about me? <laughs> I didn't get any response. Um, but I was thinking like recently I connected with, um, uh, like an online creator. She's local to the area and I just happened to find her on my explore page. And I actually sent her to you at some, I sent one of her videos to you and I was like, she's so cool, whatever. And then like, I, I think I messaged her via her stories. Cause like, I would just been really enjoying her content. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to say like, hi. And like, I'm enjoying your content. And that was pretty much it. Uh, and she responded to me and she was so sweet and she followed me back and liked a bunch of my posts and like, it was just the nicest interaction, but mm -hmm. I feel like I've actually developed a like base connection with her. It's not like I'm messaging her all the time, but like, I feel like a little bit of trust was earned. Like, oh, she like actually responded to me. Like, that's really nice. And, mm -hmm. um, I wound up just like, I'm like still consuming a lot of her content. And at one point I had the thought of looking at some of her links on her page and I saw she had like an Amazon store thing set up with a lot of her like recommendations. Cause she like does a lot of stuff with like camera equipment and things of that sort. So she had some like recommendations on there and I ended up buying like one of the products on there. Cause I was like, I trust her recommendations and I think she's cool and I love her content. So I'm, I'm going to buy this thing. Cause I, I wanted to test it out. Um, but like, making yourself available to people, even in the smallest ways can go so far, especially because like not everyone does, not everyone will respond to a comment or a DM. And I know, like I said, if you have a really big account and you have a lot of people messaging you, it might be harder to manage, but like even just the smallest responses can go so far with people. And it just, mm -hmm. it, it's such a simple thing. It's so simple, but it's so effective. And it goes such a long way with the people on the other side of the screen. So true. There are so many people that just don't respond to things. Like whether that's on an app like Instagram or like email, anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, how are you in business? Like what is happening here? That is one of my pet peeves too. When I send a very thoughtful DM, especially to like a smaller account and they see it and they don't respond to it and maybe they don't like it or even they like it. I'm like, yeah, I feel offended. Yeah. I'm like, what? That's so rude. I just took the time out of my day to like say something really thoughtful and really nice. <laughs> and then you don't even respond. I'm like, what the heck? That is just so not right. It's just like <laughs> absolutely absurd to me because we really try to respond to every, we do respond to every single message. We we're still able to do that. But especially when someone goes out of their way to send a really kind message, sometimes I even like to pop in with a voice note too, to be like, Hey, this is me. And like, I am so appreciative of what you just like shared. Like, it just means so much to me. And, um, that goes a really long way. I mean, people in our community continuously tell us like, you guys are like some of the only people that like intentionally respond to my messages or answer my questions or actually show an interest in like what I'm doing, um, before we've ever worked together. And I'm like, that's really sad. Yeah. <laughs> like that's so, so sad. So I mean, hello, pro tip. If you want to stand out, just the simplest things like responding to messages in a timely fashion that can really set you apart. Um, and to me, that should just be a part of business. But I mean, to each, to each their own. And that's what we're talking about when we say making yourself accessible and available, um, to interact with people, it's just important. And that's going to allow them to build trust with you to where like, maybe they do want to buy from you. Or, I mean, I've totally connected with people where I haven't purchased from them, but I've invited them to like collaborate with us. And we've done a collaboration exchange. You never know what a communication may lead to. It doesn't mean that you have to um, expect every conversation to turn into a pitch or a sale. Sometimes it's just like you're expanding your network. Like you're building word of mouth. You are preparing to invite them into a collaboration. Like you never know what something can turn into. So put your best foot forward there and actually respond to people. It's really important. And then the final thing we want to talk about is just realizing that we never fully arrive and ongoing development as an entrepreneur is just important and it's just a part of it. We never know all the things. We're never going to be in a position where we have nothing else to learn. 
And again, it's just so important to stay humble, like stay open to learning and to connecting with people. I think even learning about people, learning from people, like when you, I'm sorry, am I boring you? I literally <laughs> was trying so hard not to yawn. Did I yawn? Yawn, people. I'm, I'm tired, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, but seriously, staying humble, staying open to communicating and learning um, from people and about people. I mean, there's people that I've connected with in the online space where I've ended up wanting to invest in them and learn from them or attend some of their events, um, their free events that they put on and, and really support them. So stay open. Um, You know, you can think about some bigger figures, like even Tony Robbins. He's like still aspiring to do certain things to help people. Um, He is always talking about ongoing development and growth, Um, always trying new things for his health and his wellness and his business. And if someone that high level and high caliber, no matter what you think about him or what your opinion is on him, if someone like that is always learning, growing and developing, then it's definitely going to be important for those of us that are aspiring to build something incredible like he has. And I love this quote. My dad always shares it. And I don't know actually who said it, but it says, let learning and breathing cease simultaneously. Um, I think it's so easy, especially the older you get to kind of get stuck in your ways and to just turn off that part of your brain that like is open to learning and developing, but you cannot afford to do that, especially as a business owner, especially in our world, like everything is changing all the time. And so you have to be open to learning so that you can adapt and you can actually ride the waves of entrepreneurship. Um, so make yourself available for growth, for those connections and for learning on a consistent basis. Yeah, I've had to realize and accept that like it really is a continual journey of learning, like being in business, but also just in life. Like it really is like you're never going to fully arrive to a point where like you're the best at whatever you do. Okay, like you can be a great brand designer. You can be a great coach. You can be a great writer, whatever it may be. But like, I don't think anyone's ever the best, you know, and like there's always room to grow. You can like grow in that skill, you can become better at it. I feel like for me, you know, I'm always striving to like up my game and like be a better writer than I was a year ago, be a better like graphic designer or photographer than I was a year ago. Like I'm kind of always trying to compete with myself, I guess, but like there's never going to be a point where I'm like, okay, I've fully arrived and like, I've learned all I need to know about this one thing don't need to grow anymore. Like that's just not the case. And I think it can be a struggle for some of us, like me included. Cause I don't know. I just always felt like with some of these things, like with writing, for example, I always felt like, you know, I, I would learn whatever I needed to learn. And by a certain point in life, maybe like by the time I'm like 30 or 40, I will like have all these tools under my belt and I'll be like the best. And I won't have to like keep learning and growing, but seriously, it's like a whole, it's like a lifelong endeavor. Like we're always going to have to learn and grow and adapt. And like, it's always a matter of like, just figuring it out, like figuring out life, figuring out business. Like literally heard my mother say that the other day or like the other week, she is like in her sixties now. And she's like, it's always about just figuring it out. Like, and I'm like, yep. Amen. And like the sooner we can accept that, the, the better off we'll be and like just embrace the, the constant changing and adapting that happens through life and the constant, uh, the continual journey of learning and becoming and growing as, as a human being, as an individual and as an entrepreneur. Um, so don't ever get to a point where you think like, there's just no room left for you to grow because like, that's just not the case. Like there's always room for us to learn and grow just accept the fact that it's a journey, you know, it's a constant journey that we're all embarking on. (laughs) I know we both have to accept that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Like you're never done. You never fully arrived. No matter how much time you spend on something, there's always a way to improve, to make it better, to grow. And like we say this 
all the time, but really what it's all about, what it really comes down to is, are you growing? Are you becoming? Because that is the foundation for everything. That's what everything else extends from. Like you determine the capacity of growth for your business and your life based on how much you are willing to grow, how much you are willing to grow your own capacity. Um, and I think that just reinforces why this episode is like super important because you determine the limits for your life. And so you have to consistently allow yourself to grow, increase your capacity and the growth that you want for your life and your business extends from that place. So as we wrap up, just some food for thought for you guys, first and foremost, I want you to think about how can you make yourself more accessible? Again, you can think about this through a few lenses. How can you make yourself more accessible to your community? Um, so again, really thinking more about like the marketing and the sales lens here, that nurture phase, how are you making yourself accessible as people are learning about your brand, getting to know you, getting to know your brand and maybe have questions that are personal or related to purchasing from you. How can you be accessible to them, um, to your clients as well? What are some unique ways, some unique touch points that you can provide um, in order to really be accessible and create the most impact on them um, in their journey with your particular support and service as possible? And then your peers as well. Remember, if you're in business, you are in the business of networking and talking to people. So how can you open yourself up for more opportunities to expand your network, to collaborate, um, to grow word of mouth for your brand, um, remaining open to all of those elements and facets is going to be so important. And also what can you open yourself up to learning in this current season that you're in? I always highly recommend to people, uh, read books, read up on latest trends, read up on your niche, or if there's, you know, maybe something more personal that you want to learn, maybe it doesn't have to do with your career. Maybe it's like a hobby. Like, what do you want to be learning more about right now? Read books, listen to podcasts, watch YouTube tutorials and like videos. Um, just be open to learning and maybe even invest in like working with an expert as well. You know, if that, if that's what you need right now, but be open to learning and really embrace that. Cause I think that's like, that's the whole, that's the whole deal of it all Yeah. <laughs> in life. We're always learning. So start embracing it. Yeah. Like, I feel like we should all be able to confidently say that at any point in time, we are learning about something. Like right now I'm learning so much about like birth and motherhood because that's the chapter of life that I'm in. Um, I know for you, you've been diving more into like copy and marketing and what's trending and doing different research, you know, on that in particular. And so ask yourself, like, what are you actively learning right now? Maybe what's something new that you want to learn. And this doesn't just have to be in the business world. Like this can be anything. Um, I think just constantly flexing the muscle of like not knowing how to do something, learning how to do it, not maybe being the best at that thing and developing that muscle of, of really growing in a skill set is so important. I feel like that's just important for every human being, but especially for people in business, because it just sets that tone that like, you're always going to be doing that. And it like allows you to consistently like grow in an area and see what that feels like to like not know how to do something and like go through the process of learning. I think that's an important muscle to consistently flex when it comes to being a business owner. So take those things into consideration, some food for thought. And as always, we hope this episode was inspiring, empowering. Maybe it called you out. It called you higher. Um, and again, just as a collective, I hope that this really set a new standard of what it looks like to go into your business with a servant's heart, with that humility, with that attitude of I'm here to serve and there's always more to learn. And I'm never going to close myself off so much to the point where I'm not accessible to do the work that I actually am called to do and I want to do. So thanks for listening. We'll let you go and catch you in our next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.